Now this video it's all about the 18 things that you must know, that you better know about MAC addresses. Now probably this is one of those topics that you know really well. And probably you're thinking, so what's the point for me to go through this video, Jorge? Well, if that's you, let me ask you, will you be able to come up with 18 things about MAC addresses right now? Let's say that I come up to you and I ask you, can you tell me 18 things about MAC addresses? Will you be able to do that? Because let me tell you one thing, I went through that process myself and I only was able to come up with seven. And I'm like, no, 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 I need to take more time. I really need to come up with more things that I need to say on the video, not just seven things. So I know regardless of how much you know about MAC addresses, this will help you. Again, you know, how you learn a technical topic from different directions helps a lot. And the way that I teach you and the way that I walk you through, as you probably know by now, it's on how you can learn this topic in a way that you can process it for you to be able to connect it with other technical topics related to MAC addresses. Now, if this is new to you, take a lot of notes. So let's get right into it. The first thing that I thought of was a physical address. A MAC address is a physical address. Now, would you be able to answer that question if I ask you like why a MAC address it's called or it's a physical address? What would your answer be? And don't be too technical when you answer that question. Don't be too technical when you answer that question. You know, when you answer that question, try to connect with me to make a conversation out of it. So how would you answer that question? A basic question. How? You know, because me, I will be like, okay, so a MAC address, it's called, you know, and can be a physical address because you know that computer that you have in front of you has a MAC address. And that MAC address, it's burned in, in that computer. And that can be on the motherboard. And what that means is that you can take that computer and you can go to Starbucks and you can connect to their Wi-Fi and you will be able to get a different IP address but you will still have the same MAC address. What that means is the MAC address of your computer will never change and that's why it's a physical address and that's because it's burned in a physical uh, hardware and that can be the NIC card or that can be more likely in your laptop on the motherboard. Ah, right? So again, the way that you uh, answer the question makes a huge difference. And the way that you put that information out there for me to see it, for me to imagine, that's exactly what's gonna differentiate you from everyone else. So again, a MAC address, it's a physical address because that address, the, the MAC address of that computer, it's uh, burned in that device. It doesn't change. Not like IP addresses, logical addresses. You know, those, the IP of those computers will change every time they connect to another network. And that's if they are configured to get the IP uh, dynamically, right? So let's move on. The second thing that I was uh, thinking when I was going through this process myself was a MAC address is a Ethernet address. Now, if you haven't watched my other video about what's a MAC address, you know, uh, what would you answer me? Because I know if you watch my previous video, I know you will be able to come up with an answer right now. But if not, what would you answer me? Why an ether, Ethernet uh, address? Remember, right, you have computers. Let's say you have three computers connected on a layer two switch. And at that point, you have a local area network, a local area network. You have one subnet. You know, let's say you have them in one VLAN, one network. So what that means is that those computers are on a, a local Ethernet. Let's be more specific. Ethernet network. Why Ethernet? Because it's all about MAC addresses when computers communicate uh, on the Ethernet level network, okay? That's why we can call a MAC address an Ethernet address, you know, because that's, let's say, the language that they speak when they are in a local area network. So not like the big picture, you know, when networks communicate with each other, but, you know, when you have computers communicate, communicating within, within the same network. Now, the other thing that I was thinking, obviously, that that's something that you probably come up with was, you know, a MAC address has a 48-bit hexadecimal number. Not like IP addresses, right? Like IP addresses, 
And this is something that you need to think about. Then let's say that you come up to me like, hey, Jorge, can you tell me a few things about a MAC address? So you see, at that point, you are not asking me nothing related with an IP address, nothing at all. But the way that I'm going to answer that question, I'm going to mention it, like what I did right now. Like, yeah, you know, like uh, a MAC address, one of the things is that it has a 48-bit hexadecimal number, not like IP addresses. As you know, IP addresses like version 4, they're all about, you know, uh, a 32-bit decimal numbers, just decimal numbers, not hexadecimal numbers like uh, not like uh, the MAC address. And by the way, IP addresses version 4 has four octets. MAC addresses have six octets. Okay? Now let's move on. So a MAC address looks like this. Or it can also look something like this. Same MAC address for a different way on how to write it down. Now for many people, they're just barely going into their IT career, you know, getting to learn these topics, a lot of people get confused. I'm like, does that, uh, it's the same as that one? I'm like, yeah, you know? So that's something that I remember going back that I didn't know really well because no one kind of like explained that to me so well. But you see, the same MAC address, just different way and how to write it down, okay? Now the other thing, obviously now that we're talking about the hexadecimal numbers, about octets and all of that, you know, with hexadecimal numbers, we use the number decimal numbers from the number zero all the way to the number nine. And then we use not all of them, but we use a lot of the letters. And we use from A all the way to F. A equals 10. B equals 11. C equals 12 all the way to F equals 15. Okay, so that's good to know. Now, number five, we still have a lot to go through. The first 24 bits. The first 24 bits the first three octets are assigned by IEEE. And you can call IEEE a corporation, an association, whatever you want to call it, really don't care. No one cares, right? But IEEE are the ones that basically assign the first three octets or the first 24 bits out of the MAC address. And they, 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 IEEE needs to make sure that, and again, this is something where, you know, I'm going to start a new a computer company and I'm gonna build you know computers and laptops so I'm planning to do probably you know 5,000 each month so I need to come to IEEE Association and be like hey you know I'm about to build some computers and I'm gonna about to put them on the market so obviously I'm gonna need to assign you know the a MAC address to each of one of those computers and I know based on the process that I need to go through and follow that you need to give me the first three so IEEE needs to make sure that the one the First, uh, 24 bits that they're gonna give me, they need to make sure that they haven't, they haven't, that they haven't give to anyone else. Not HP, not Dell, not any other vendor. That basically will be like just, you know, uh, uh, assigned to me. And then me, right, now going to the next one, the last 24 bits, the last three octets, okay, are assigned by me, the vendor, okay? And that will be those three. So I need to make sure that I do not assign the last 24 bits to two or more uh, computers or end devices, network devices, okay? So that's exactly how uh, we are able to come up with MAC addresses. And remember, you take that computer, you take that laptop, you know, any other network device out of the box, and it already has a MAC address. We don't have to assign it, we don't have to, we cannot change it. Yes, there's a few softwares out there that you can probably change that, but it's not usual. So for you to know, MAC addresses do not change and they already uh, are out there uh, when you take the end device, the network device out of the box. Number seven, and because of that, they are globally unique. What that means is there's no other computer, there is no other network device, they, ha they can have the same MAC address that my computer have. That's no way. Now, you can go online and you will find a few people on social media and some blogs saying, hey, you know, I just noticed that I have two devices in my company that I work with, they have the same MAC address. I seen that happening. I haven't, that never happened to me and I don't think it will, but I see some people claiming that that happened. So that can be, but, the moral of the story is that MAC addresses should be globally, not locally to your network, not locally to your company, no, globally unique. 
The next one, and that basically identifies the hardware interface. So the next one was the burn into the ROM of the NIC, the NIC card, the network interface card. Now, a lot of the uh, network devices, that's already built in the motherboard, okay? So it's already built in the motherboard. And you can probably add, depending, uh, let's say, the desktop computer that you have, other PCI cards. That's what they call a NIC card, you know? And that NIC card will have, you know, a, a, a chip called RAM, even though motherboards too, you know? And what stands for is read-only memory, read-only memory. So that basically tells you, right? Like once you write in, that's it. You're going to only be able to read it, not for you to change it, for you to modify. It doesn't say, you know, writable only memory no like read only once it's the information it's there you can only read it okay now the next one each network device has a unique mac address and yeah probably if i go back to the previous ones that i walk you through i'm like jorge you just said that yes but remember you know i always find different ways for me to connect information related to the topic that i'm learning to the topic that i'm teaching because once you are able to do that, it will be so much easier for you to be able to recall this information. And it will be so much easier for you for that information that you have in your mind to come up out of your mouth. Again, if you haven't watched many of my videos, that's one of the biggest issues that many people have. They're really badass, you know, they know a lot, they have experience, and everything it's, you know, going through in their mind, like, yes, I know this, I know that, I've been doing this. But when it's about to, them say something about it, they can't. And that's one of many reasons why they can get a higher job in the IT field. You see? So let's move on. So 10, layer two of the OSI model. Yeah, MAC addresses right away. That was probably one of the first thing that came up to your mind. You know, well, MAC addresses, Jorge, you know, layer two of the OSI model, the data link layer. And when I think about that, obviously I think about switches. Layer two switches. I think about that, Jorge, right? MAC addresses, switches, switches, MAC addresses. Now, why? Why that is? Because switches read MAC addresses, right? And switches, we use them on local area networks. We use them on local area networks. And I think, because right now, remember, every time that I approach and learning something, I always try to connect it with something that already makes sense to me. So right now, that's many things going through my mind when I see this, like, oh, local area network, you know, switches you know, MAC addresses, um, Ethernet network, because it's within their own local area network. Uh, the other thing is the CAM table, and that's basically, basically the MAC address table. But if you want to be more professional, like you want to be like correct, you know, the MAC address table and a switch, because remember the switches with MAC addresses, it's called the CAM table. And if I'm not mistaken, okay, because this is something that you now need to know, but if I'm not mistaken, that's content. I think it's content. Yeah. Address, address, uh, addressable memory, if I'm not mistaken. Content addressable memory table. And that's, again, that table that builds switches when you connect, you know, end devices to that switch. So you can learn the MAC addresses of those end devices. The next one is frames. Again, I can take a frame, right, one of the frames, and I will see that destination MAC address and where it goes to, and the source where it's coming from, MAC address. And remember, this is all about that PDUs, the packet data units that go basically through the OSI model. And I already went through in one of the 33 videos that you can access at no cost, completely free. A link should be on top or underneath of this video because I really wanna give you a lot of value. Now, 15, the NIC card, yes, you know, uh, again, that can be the motherboard, but that can be the NIC card. That's what something that goes through my mind when I was thinking about MAC addresses. You see, the more that you can connect uh, related topics, technical topics, content, and information to the topic that you are learning or that you are basically communicating to someone else, the better. You know, so sometimes you should do the same. When I'm like me, when I'm about to uh, teach a topic, I'm like, okay. Before me doing any research, before me going to back some of my notes or anything else, I'm like, based on what I know so far and everything that I've been studying, everything that I, uh, that I have learned, the experience that I have, what do I know based on this topic? That's exactly what I do on each of the videos. And then if I don't see 
that it's a lot for me to give you value. I'm like, okay, let me go back to some of the videos. Let me go back to some of the notes. Let me go back and do some more research. And then when I have everything, I'm like, okay, now that I have everything in front of me, how can I put it in a way that's going to make sense to you? Not to me, to you. How can I put it in a way that you will see like, oh, I can connect that with something they already know. Oh, I can connect that information with something that makes sense to me. Because the more that you are able to do that, the better you will be, okay? So, 16, we are almost done. TCP IP settings, okay? TCP IP settings. What that means is you can go on the properties of the port of the connection of your computer, let's say, on the, ne on the network port, and you will find the MAC address of that port, okay? And that's basically in the TCP IP settings. And that's something that you can see, not just the MAC address, but the IP, the summoning mask, the default gateway, the IP version 6 that's the, uh, automatically assigned to that computer, uh, the DNS, if you type IP config forward space, forward slash all on a Windows computer in the command prompt. And you'll be able to find the MAC address as well. And the last thing, because it was 18, ARP, right? ARP. Address Resolution Protocol. And this is something that I previously explained in a previous video about what's a MAC address, about that. Like, Computer A wants to communicate with Computer B, but Computer A only knows the IP address of Computer B. But because these two computers are connected on the same local area network, what that means are connected on an Ethernet network, and what that means they're connected on a Layer 2 switch, and what that means they're basically the switch with only MAC addresses, it will be like, okay, so for you, for me to be able to help you, Computer A, to send a message to computer B, you need to give me the MAC address of computer B. And computer A will be like, well, I, ha I don't have that. I only have the, uh, the IP address. So at that point, address resolution protocol will help and be like, okay, don't worry about it. Give me the IP. I'm gonna go and all uh, end devices connected to that switch, a broadcast and be like, hey, who has this IP and the one who replies to me saying, hey, that's me, I will ask for the MAC address. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring it back to you, computer A. That way you can go to the switch and say, hey, I wanna communicate with the following computer that has the MAC address, blah, blah, blah. And boom, that's exactly why I was thinking about ARP when I was thinking about MAC addresses. Now, you see the process that I've been going through so far with you, not just in this video, but in previous videos. This is how you need to communicate this information with other people. And once you are able to do that, you will be able to go to higher and higher uh, positions in the IT field. Not that many people know how to do that, but that's because the way they approach the learning process, it's wrong. I was doing that for many years. I didn't know any better. But I did one smart thing, and that was that I listened, that I listened to people that had results not just anyone, because if you just listen to anyone, more likely you're gonna end up like them. An average life, an average IT career, and by the way, probably you don't know this by now, but you have one life. Make it count. Now, what I'm gonna ask you to do is for you to follow us on social media. You know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and make sure to check our coaching program, Inner Circle and our membership site if this is something that you want uh, to pursue based on the way the Network Engineer Academy teach these topics and beyond the technical. So that's it, that's all I have. Comment underneath the video as well and I will talk to you in another video.